You are listening to a special episode from the Riverbend Youth Podcast. We hope that the conversation around this topic is helpful to you and your walk with Jesus. Please enjoy the talk. Well, last week, my daughter broke her arm. Um, Her name is Maisie. She's almost five years old, and she was on the trampoline, came down on that sucker wrong, and pop goes the weasel. So uh, I took her to get an x-ray, and the doctor explained how it's such a minor, significant, like, below hairline fracture on her, um, in her elbow. And he's like, you can't even really see the crack on the x-ray yet. And he's trying to explain this to me. He's like, but in a few weeks, and I just cut him off right there. And I was like, a calcium buildup will develop on the hairline fracture and it'll be more apparent on the x-ray. And he's like, yes, how did you know that? And I was like, you're talking to a pro. By the time I graduated high school, I had already broken 12 bones, um, And he was like, oh, so you know the drill. I'm like, I know the drill. See, I used to race dirt bikes when I was a kid, all through middle school and high school, um, and was also just an all-around idiot in a lot of ways. Like, I kind of had that philosophy of, like, live fast, die young sort of thing. Like, who cares about how I feel when I'm 80? I'm not 80. I'm 14, and I'm going to have some fun. Uh, I'll worry about that later. Sleep when you're dead. Like, that was, that was me. Um, so I would just go as fast and crazy as I possibly could um, without getting hurt. Problem is, sometimes it didn't end so well, and I had to pay the price, and I actually did get hurt, which is why I tell my kids now all the time, um, if, if you're going to be dumb, you got to be tough. And my dad told me that my whole life. If you're going to be dumb, you got to be tough. And um, so I'm just trying to instill that in my kids. I'm not saying they're dumb people, but they make dumb decisions sometimes, okay? And why do I tell you all that? Why am I introing that story as we finish off our sex talk, our series on sex? Well, uh, since we are finishing the series today, I'm not saying you're dumb or that sex is dumb. Frankly, I think it's awesome. Um, But in the wrong context... Um, it, it can be dangerous if you're not careful, and you could end up hurt. Um, so to keep in our theme with things being both good and powerful, um, like we said, sex is good and powerful, technology is good and powerful, and so is confession. The bottom line for this talk is that boundaries are good and boundaries are powerful. And now I know as soon as I say that, you're thinking boundaries are lame, you sound like my mom or my dad saying that, like, well, you have to put up some proper boundaries. <laughs> and, like, it's like when you're bowling and they put up the bumpers on the side. And it's like, uh, uh, those, that's kid stuff, you know? I'm free to make my own decisions and live my life and accept the consequences as I choose. Give me the bowling lane. Dang it. With no bumpers. Boundaries are dumb, but... Let's just think of a world without boundaries for a whole second real quick. Like, think about just one example. Just take roads and driving. We talked about driving last week. Think about driving. If, if there were no lines on the streets, which I've been in a third world country where there are no lines on the streets and people just driving around. They got like six kids and a goat on the back of a moped and there's like weaving in between semi trucks going 800 miles per hour. And you're like, ah, it was horrifying all the time. It was madness. If that was the case here, people would be flying all over the place, getting hurt, causing endless amounts of damage. So my question for us this morning is how can we have all of the freedom of driving, but keep it as safe and responsible and honorable with high integrity as possible? Well, to answer these questions um, on the topic of sex, we're going to go back to where it all started, where we started this series In week one, where we looked at the beginning, we looked at creation, we looked at Adam and Eve in the the Garden of Eden, and and we covered a passage um, there, and we're going to take it all the way back. But before we get there, I want to look at one we covered in week two, which is when Paul said this in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 18 through 20. He says, flee from sexual immorality. And that's what we've been talking about all this time. I said I wasn't going to say the word abstinence one time in this series, 
other than when I said I wouldn't say it, and right now when I said I'm not saying it again, he's not saying that necessarily. He's saying from, from things that are sexually immoral. We've been introducing this topic of sexual integrity, doing something, if you're doing something sexually and you feel shame afterwards, it probably wasn't the right thing. That would probably be something immoral or something not of sexual integrity. We said focus more on that honoring God, honoring yourself, honoring others and your body, and less on just the do's and don'ts and like waiting till marriage and like just the black and whiteness of that, right? So he says this, all other sins a person commits are outside of the body. Whoever uh, commits sins sexually sins against their own body. Don't you know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you? If you've accepted Christ, congratulations. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave is alive in you. And that comes from God. You are not your own. You were bought with a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. So all throughout scripture, since the beginning, all the way to that point and forevermore, we see this theme that we are created in God's image by a good God to do good things. And one of those things is sex. We are created sexual beings and we have sexual desires um, we're physically attracted to other people, and we are curious about sex and those things. And this is normal, and this is good. It's nothing to be ashamed of. It's nothing to feel icky, yucky, or dirty about. It's good, and it's right, and it's normal. But Paul's also saying on the same, uh, other, same coin, other side, that when we are about to cross boundary lines when it comes to sex, that we should run the other way. <laughs> literally flee, yeet out of there. So think about boundaries, sexual integrity like this. Number one, boundaries keep things out. Boundaries also keep things in. They want, they, they're created to keep the, the, good, the bad things out, keep the good things in. Boundaries, when they're done well and done right and exhaustively, they don't have gaps or loopholes and boundaries can be seen from a long way away. Like if you were thinking about a castle or a fortress, there would be like a, a, a wall, a significant wall around it meant to keep the, the people who belong there in and any attacks or, or threats from the outside out. People can see it coming the, from a, a distance away. Like it's a statement. It's like, don't cross that, right? Now, some of you are probably thinking like, here we go. This is the part where you tell us all the things that we can't do, all the things that we shouldn't do. It's, the whole series has led to this moment and that sex, you're going to say it's bad, isn't it? And that like, we, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't do it. And if you feel that way, I get it. I just want you to know I felt that way in high school and it had a lot to do with how talks and conversations, particularly in church, were handled on the topic. I felt ashamed all the time because I had these feelings and these desires I felt ashamed because I had put up boundaries for myself and I wasn't successful in maintaining them perfectly all of the time. Um, I felt ashamed to even talk about sex or porn um, because it felt just too taboo to talk about. So I kept it all um, to myself and didn't share the struggle with anyone, which just compounded the feelings of shame, which turned into guilt and depression and just anger and fear and nothing good was happening. And so if that's you, just can I encourage you to be released from that in some way? Like none of those things come from God, right? God's intention for sex wasn't for it to be shameful. And we have a sexual thought or desire or conversation for you to walk away feeling horrible about yourself. That was never part of the plan. In the beginning, shame and sex had nothing to do with one another, as a matter of fact. And this is where we started the series in Genesis chapter 2. Do you remember this? Adam and his wife were both naked. I said it in church. And they felt no shame. And there's something pretty cool about the fact that they were just nude. And they weren't ashamed about it whatsoever. And you think like, why is this verse even included in the Bible? And I think it's for us to see God's intention that it's possible for his people, including us, whom he created to be sexual beings, to have attraction toward one another, to have sex, for them to be naked in front of each other, for God to be fully aware of that and for him to be like, cool, <laughs> all right, <laughs> have fun, get it. Like that's, that's why I think this was included in scripture. Like there was no shame there at all. 
Everything was fine, and God knew about it, and he was okay with it. Some people used to tell me, don't do anything with a girl that you wouldn't want your grandma watching. Uh, I used to think about it like, don't do anything with someone that I wouldn't want God to see. Or God, and, and just to see that God was aware of this and, and was totally for it. In fact, he created him for it. It gave me a lot of encouragement. But there are also things that he would be aware of and know that he probably wouldn't be all for, right? Things might be outside of the boundary lines. So, you move forward a chapter. We all know what happens. In Genesis 2, you go to Genesis 3, and you see this point where Adam and Eve went outside of the boundaries that they and God had agreed on. And Adam answered in verse 10 of chapter 3, I heard you, God, in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and so I hid. He felt shame. He, he hid because he was ashamed. So you might be asking, okay, what does it look like to take that and apply it to now, to 2023, in my context, as a middle schooler, as a high schooler, what do I do with this? What does this look like for me? I'm going to answer that with a little story. The story is not going to be your story. The story is not my story. The story is a symbol. It's a true story. But apply it to yourself. Apply it to your life. Put yourself in these shoes and understand that it might look completely different, and that's okay. I had some friends in college whose names I have altered for their protection. Derek and Jordan. And I met this couple in church. And they were dating. And eventually Derek proposed to Jordan and they became engaged to be married. And we were all really excited for them. Der Derek and Jordan had had sex before. Not just with each other, with previous girlfriends and boyfriends in the past. And... Um, after their engagement, Derek and Jordan decided to set up some boundaries, some physical boundaries when it came down to intimacy to, to protect sort of the sanctity of their relationship and their sexual integrity. And in, honor, or in an effort to honor God and in an effort to honor themselves and each other, where they decided to draw the boundary line was on kissing. They... <laughs> This is their past, right? They said, we're engaged. We are not going to kiss until we're married, until our wedding day, right? And uh, the crazy thing about that is already you're like, that's insane. We're in college. You're not even going to, like, must have been like two, three weeks of an engagement before they got married. No, it was a year. They were engaged for a year before they got married. And we knew this was going to be difficult considering where they had been uh, and their urges. And like I said, how God had made us and, and all that stuff, that this was going to be a challenge and this was going to be very hard, but it was very important for them because they knew, they knew that if, if, we, if we kissed, it would lead to making out. And if we started making out, it'd lead to touching. And if touching happened, we would go from vertical to horizontal. And then if that happened, Clothes might start coming. And then you see how it goes. One thing leads to another. So like, we're not even going to start because if you don't start, you can't go too far. And so that was their conviction. And that's where a sort of God and them had it uh, for, for them. Now, I'm not saying, like I said, that that should be everyone's conviction. It wasn't my conviction. I had a girlfriend at the time who is my now wife, actually. And we had no problem kissing in high school. Frankly, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, but let me tell you this. Whenever... We were, all, we were all at Derek and Jordan's wedding. And when, when he said, you may kiss the ride, we were all like, and, and they kissed. And we were like, yeah, just threw a party. Like it was insane. We went crazy for them because they had made it. And you know how I know that they had made it that entire time without kissing? God's here. You know how, y'all better listen. You know how I know that they made it the entire time? Because... <laughs> because they didn't go anywhere alone. The boundary had boundaries. Like, anytime they were in a car, if they, if they knew they were going to be leaving a function or going to a place together in the same car, they would have someone else in the backseat with them. 
Like, it was like that. They, they would, and then that person would drop them off at the house and watch them go into the house and make sure the other person didn't go in the house. Like, when they went on dates, they would take separate vehicles, show up at the same place, and leave. Like, it was very, I mean, to me, over the top. But for them, this is what I'm trying to say. We're all going to have different boundaries and different reasons and different places where we, we draw that line for us. And you have to know you and you have to know God and you and your body and your desires and what tempts you and, and the things that are enticing to you so that you don't even take that first step. Because if you take the first step, it's a slippery one and it goes down into a place that you probably don't want to end up, right? They took it seriously. They succeeded. They got a healthy marriage. It's awesome because it was built on something strong and good. I applaud them for that. So for, for you guys, I just, I want to encourage you to do a few things, right? As a middle schooler, as a high schooler sitting in this room, as a sexual being created by God to experience these types of intimate pleasures, number one, talk to God about your boundaries. Talk to him about your boundaries. What is it for you? Is, is holding hands the most that you're comfortable with doing right now? And like, that's fine. Is it kissing? Where's the line for you? And a good way to know this is afterwards, do you feel guilty, dirty, and shameful? Because if so, you probably need to take a step back and that might be your boundary line. Number two, talk to others about your boundaries. Derek and Jordan, almost said their real names for a second. Um, (laughs) Delete that from the podcast. Um, Derek and Jordan told everyone about this. They're like, hey, this is very important for us. Don't let us kiss. And we're like, okay. And then word got around, they're like, yo, they're not trying to kiss until marriage. I'm like, oh, shoot, for real? And then like everyone knew and we were supportive of that. So let some other people know and have them hold you accountable to it. Be transparent with them. And look, if you mess up and you cross the boundary line, it's okay. There's grace and there's forgiveness for that. But that leads me to point number three, honor your boundaries. Don't get as close to the dang boundary as humanly possible without technically stepping over the line. You're like, I know we're not supposed to do that, but I'm gonna get as close as possible and it's 2 a.m. and it's dark and there's no one around and I can do it, I can, no, you can't, okay? You're gonna fail. Like that's just, that is dumb. Like that would be, I mean, come on. You'll fail, like me on my dirt bike, or my daughter on a trampoline. Number four, honor their boundaries. This could be another person. It could be a person on a screen. I don't really care. There's something, if there's someone that you're involved with that you're dating or that you're just friends with benefits with or just friends or whatever, and someone else doesn't want to do something and they have a boundary but maybe the boundary is different than yours. Default to the most conservative boundary. Like respect them over your own sort of, you're like, well, I'm comfortable with going here. Well, I'm not. And respect that. Don't push or pressure anyone to doing something they're not comfortable with. And doing that, you're respecting God too. Because listen, boundaries are actually good. They help us function. They help us get the best and the most out of life. They're not a bad thing. They're not the enemy. You have to define what they are for you. And I think that you'll make the right decisions when you really listen to God, when you really talk to people, and when you really are in tune with yourself and what you know is good and true and right and going to be most beneficial and helpful for you moving forward in your relationships. I, I, I trust you guys to make the right decisions in these areas. Boundaries are powerfully good when we're inside of what we and God knows is best for us. Boundaries can be powerfully destructive when we step outside of them. But God is powerfully good all of the time, regardless of what you've seen, done, what's been done to you, whatever. He sees you, he loves you. So may you, as we finish this series, honor God with your body, honor God with your sexuality and experience all of the goodness of intimacy that he designed you for. And may you not settle for any substitutes or counterfeits. 
May you set up good boundaries and have honest conversations with God. May you have honest conversations with people and feel the release of the pressure and the stress and the anxiety and the depression and the sadness and the hurt and the guilt and the shame and only feel all of the goodness and the grace and the goodness of God. And that, my friends, is our sex talk. Thank you for listening to this special episode from the Riverbend Youth Podcast. To learn about our mission, gatherings, and more, please follow us on Instagram at rbyouth or check out our website at riverbend.com slash students. If you found this conversation helpful, please subscribe, rate us, and consider sharing our channel with a friend. Available anywhere you get podcasts.